Hey guys, this is Ernesto and welcome back to yet another video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm having a wonderful day. So today we're going to talk about how to create double exposure images all in camera. So stay tuned and we're going to talk all about it. I believe in the 1860s, photographers figured out a way to add some secret sauce into their photography. That secret sauce is known as double exposure photography. This was or is the technique that takes one or more images and combines them and create one single image. This technique can be achieved with both film and digital cameras, but not all cameras have this feature. For example, some Canon and Nikon cameras have this feature, not all of them, but some do. For example, the 60 Mark II and my EOS R has it. And also my 5D Mark III that I used to have also had this feature. So some of these cameras do have it. So Canon and Nikon, and I believe Sony cameras do not have this feature. Or, um, at least I don't believe they have this feature because in my Sony a7 III, I cannot find this feature. So you guys could correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think um, Sony cameras have this in-camera feature where you could create um, multiple exposures in camera. You still have other tools such as Photoshop which you can use to create the same effect. In fact, in Photoshop, you will have much more control over the final outcome of the image. However, that takes away from the fun of creating the image in camera and also just wowing your subject on set, you know, that when you could show them that final image and they'll be like, wow, how did you actually create that? So of course you could do this in Photoshop, but obviously creating it in camera is a lot more fun. So let's talk about how to enable the in camera double exposure feature. Now I will be talking about enabling this from a Canon perspective, but obviously you could just look up how to enable this on your camera. So if it's Nikon, Sony, whatever camera you have, if it has the feature, I'm sure you could look it up on how to actually activate it. First, let's cover the equipment I'm using today. I'm using the Canon EOS R along with the IRIX 45 millimeter and 11 millimeter lens to help me create the images you will see in this video. In the Canon EOS R to activate this feature, access the shooting menu, screen one, select the multiple exposure shooting mode of your choice. The options are activating it and selecting Additive. Now, additive was the choice that I use for the images that you will see in this video. So you could basically explore the different other options that they have there, but additive is what I use for my multiple exposure and all the multiple exposures that I have been using um, over the course of me practicing this, this, um, this particular feature. You will then choose the number of exposure. In my case, I chose two. Next, I chose to save the source images by selecting all images. Next, I chose one shot only as I wanted to exit out of the double exposure feature after I capture my images. If you chose continuously, the camera will allow you to take multiple images to create multiple exposures until you exit out of the double exposure feature. So let's talk about how to create the double exposure images. And actually the process is pretty simple once you activate the feature in camera. So let's walk through how to basically do that. So although the actual creation of the double exposure image is pretty straightforward, I started out this process in 2018 and I failed at it tremendously. And the reason I failed at it is because having a plan of execution of basically your final output that you want, basically the final image that you want, having a plan and actually how to get there helps, well, it helped me tremendously to get to a point where I was happy with the final image. So I would say the first thing before you even start is just simply have a good idea of what you want ultimately. Um, and then once you have that, then you will know what type of images you would need to capture, which I'll get into in a minute, meaning the base image, and then what the second image you need to capture, which I'll get into that in a minute as well. But having a good idea of what you want ultimately will 
allow you to have some level of uh, well some level of success with this okay i am by no means an expert at this technique because i'm still learning since I, like i said started in 2018. so once i had a concept dialed in and i knew what i wanted to create then it was just a matter of me figuring out how i was going to execute it for me i always start out with the base image this could be a cityscape with uh, the sky blown out or a simple silhouette of a person in my case what i chose to do was basically capture um, two things for my base image i chose to capture the cityscape basically looking for a city skyline and get in the sky a little bit overexposed and then also get in a shot of a tree a silhouette of a tree and get in the sky a little bit overexposed so those were my two base images that i captured for the images that you ultimately will see the final images that you ult ultimately will see in this video this base image could be captured on the day of the shoot or several days before the shoot the important item about the base image is that it has negative space that is somewhat overexposed or white and it have a dark section of the image once i had the base image i would select it in camera if you have a mirrorless camera then you can see a ghost image of the base image in the viewfinder if you have a dslr camera you would have to activate your live view in order to see the ghost based image for the second photo keep in mind that a second image will be seen in the dark area of the first image the second photo will now fill in the dark areas of the base image and blend into the white or overexposed area of the base image and finally once you have the ghost image in place once you select that ghost image and you're ready to execute your second image what's really important with the second image is ensuring that you align the second image in the final layout that you're looking for which is that final vision that you're looking for so if you want you know things to be growing out of the subject head or if you want to shape the subject's um, features in a certain way using the city skyline this is where you would want to line up the second image with the first image properly so seeing that ghost outline of the first image which is the based image would allow you to easily align the second image when you're about to go capture that second image so that will require you to you know turn the camera in some weird ways to to basically align your image uh, properly right so you just have to see the vision so that when you're about to click the shutter to take that second image because as soon as you click the shutter to take that second image is when both of those images will be combined into a single image so the white area of the image will just get faded away and then the uh, dark area of the image will get blended in so those two things will help you to create that outline of the subject so you could see just like the subject's features being defined by the city landscape or by the tree so that's how you will go about capturing a double exposure image all right guys so that is it man i hope this video was helpful to you if it was please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up put some comments down below let me know what you think please share the video with your friends and family and guys by the way you know put some comments down below let me know which one of your which one of these images in this video was your favorite let me know put some comments down below let me know and guys please share this video with your friends and family if you think it will be helpful to them 
And if you got this far in this video and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, well, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on my next video. Take care.